Well, greetings from Bowling Green, Kentucky. You guys, it's the 29th of June. Oh my goodness. And guess what? This is my 29th year of the 29th of June in Mary Kay. I know that if you're listening, first of all, I just want to let you know that I wanted to come to you tonight to um, embrace our epic family, our Shaw National area, as you're working diligently to finish a goal. You know, there's nothing more exciting, really, than having a goal that means something to you, that you really, uh, I guess as April Hutchinson said today, there's that there's that gap, that tension between what you know can be and what has been even maybe verbally promised, that tension between what you believe God is going to do and between what you see, because there's a gap. And so that tension is that place where there's just the, the excitement and it's, it's also where there's the growth. So if you're watching this tonight, you're in one of many places. One, you, perhaps you're a brand new beauty consultant. Oh, how I wish I had started my business with full inventory. But I will tell you this, that because I did start my business with star consultant inventory, it's the thing that kept me in the business because I couldn't remember why I started until I was tripping over boxes back and forth, really a couple of months later. And um, because I was busy and I really liked my job, I was just broke as a, you know, Dick's hat band. I mean, I was, um, and, and, and my future was not in education, but I didn't know that then. I was 26 years old. So if I didn't have that inventory in front of me to do something with, I probably would not have pursued Mary Kay. So if you're brand new and you're making a decision about inventory, start with full inventory. It would just, it would make the most sense. And at the 60% that we're getting right now, oh my goodness, maybe you've been in Mary Kay a long time. You enjoy your business. You're a family and friends consultant. You don't really, you know, you just enjoy it. Um, you're not looking at a car or looking to make it full time, but you really love it and, and you love uh, our company and our product. So, you know, that's where you are. You might not even need inventory right now. I'm going to invite you to, to be a team player and to do something different. Um, Maybe you're on a team where you know your team leader is working to get on target for a car, move into DIQ, or finish DIQ, or hit her first on the move new director award, or one of the middle ones, or one the final one, or go for a record, or you're in a unit where your director is going for Cadillac, or unit club, or uh, rank in our national area, or to break a record, or the million dollar unit club, or the trip. So either way, you're either on a team that's leading a team to a victory or you're a part of a team that is working on a victory. But either way, whether you realize it or not, you're in one of those two places. And so I want to invite you uh, to do something really special and spectacular. My first seminar, um, the first time I hit June 29th, I didn't even know it was important. I mean, I really didn't. I didn't, I didn't know there were courts. I didn't know there was a seminar. I didn't even go to seminar. <laughs> Cindy Machado Flippin will tell you that she went, she did, she was my first recruit, and she did go to seminar with Libby, my recruiter, and I didn't go, I went to drill team camp. Um, the next year, I was in DIQ, finishing DIQ, and my director had never been on a top trip before. I didn't know what a top trip was, I really didn't know what seminar was, since I hadn't really been, so um, what I did know is that I wanted to be a team player for Nancy and I wanted to do anything that I could to make sure she got to Hong Kong and so my DIQ team was wrapping up really strong I had two on-target car drivers on my team and you know we were finishing we were finishing strong and we were finishing before the month ended um, and so I, I wasn't under the gun to find more production but I did you guys I did I wanted Nancy to go to Hong Kong and so you know we recruited stars and once you recruit a star she recruits a star and stars recruit stars and that's really kind of the way it goes and so um, we did a record month that month. We did 24,000 wholesale as a DIQ team, and she got to go to Hong Kong. And I will tell you that when you choose to be a team player, you set yourself up for the what goes around comes around. Um, and and you did, the opposite is also true, but let's look at it from the positive perspective. I believe that the abundance and overflow that God has truly blessed me with in my Mary Kay business um, can, can be traced back to, to that decision that month where it wasn't just about me, I made it about somebody else. I made it about my director. And um, I'm referencing the late Nancy Perry. She passed away almost eight years ago, three months after my late husband uh, lost his life to the crazy same disease, Lou Gehrig's disease. And so I, I realized that, you know, that turning point for her and that trip for her, it was a turning point in her life as well. I have forever felt great about being a part of that win. And so here we are. Um, 
less than 36 hours out. Is that right? I don't know. Tomorrow night at midnight central time is when our seminar year ends. But these bundles that are out there right now at 60%, Oh my goodness, I was so excited today when we got the substitute bundles of the TimeWise Repair because that's my favorite. Oh my goodness. It is like money in your pocket when you when you purchase product that way. There's also a little video that I'm sending around that Linda Tupin sent out, and which is if, if you're looking to find resources to place your order tonight uh, and tomorrow, then her suggestion was find 10 friends who know a lot of people. And this would be nurses who work 12-hour shifts or educators who have a lot of friends or go to the ballpark where their parents hanging out. But do it fast. Select 10 friends and have them sell seven mascaras for you. Really, they could buy seven mascaras for you because you need to go through at least six yourself throughout the year because every eight to 12 weeks, you need to get new ones because of bacteria and that's the way mascara goes. So you could sell a lot of those yourself. Um, but if you had... 10 friends sell seven for you. That's a thousand dollar wholesale order. Bam, just like that. You can figure that out. So here's the reality. Our, our, our national area and our epic family, we're going for some really big wins in the next 36 hours. And I'm inviting you to be a part of that win. Ask your recruiter what you can do. Ask your director what you can do. Because I will tell you that if she will be frank with you and give you an amount, an wholesale order amount that would make a difference, you can probably find a reason to, to place that order. If you're not on profit level, oh my goodness, get 4,000 wholesale classic line on your shelf faster than faster than faster. You will sell what you have. Mary Kay always used to say you can't sell from an empty wagon and you won't sell. You'll hold back from selling if you don't actually have product to sell. And the other piece of that is, you know, what if you decide next month or, or six months from now that you want to go on target for your car? You will already know what it's like to be a team player for somebody else who's working to finish a goal. I was reminded today from one of our national sales directors, Lara McKeever, um, about this poem. I used to read this poem at my unit meeting often, and so I want to share it with you tonight. It's called The Race. Quit. Give up. You're beaten, they shout and plead. There's just too much against you now. This time, you can't succeed. And as I start to hang my head in front of failure's face, my downward fall is broken by the memory of a race. And hope refills my weakened will as I recall that scene. For just the thought of that short race rejuvenates my being. A children's race, young men, young boys, oh, I remember it well. Excitement, sure, but also fear. It wasn't hard to tell. They all lined up so full of hope. Each thought to win that race or tie for first, or if not, at least take second place. And fathers watched from off the side, <laughs> I can't do this without crying, each cheering for his son, and each boy hoped to show his dad that he would be the one. The whistle blew and off they went, young hearts and hopes of fire, to win, to be the hero. There was each young boy's desire. And one boy in particular, his dad was in the crowd, was running near the lead and thought, oh, my dad will be so proud. And as he speeded down the field across a shallow dip, the little boy who thought to win lost his step and slipped. Ah, sorry. Trying hard to catch himself, his hands flew out to brace, and mid the laughter of the crowd, he fell flat on his face. And so down he fell, and with him hope he couldn't win it now. Embarrassed, sad, he only wished to disappear somehow. But as he fell, his dad stood up and showed his anxious face that to the boy so clearly said, Get up and win that race. He quickly rose, no damage done. Behind a bit, that's all, and ran with all his might and might to make up for his fall. So anxious to restore himself, to catch up and to win, his mind went faster than his legs, and he slipped and fell again. He wished that he'd quit before with only one disgrace. I'm a hopeless runner now. I shouldn't try to race. But in the laughing crowd, he searched and found his father's face, that steady look that said again, get up and win that race. So he jumped up to try again, 10 yards behind the last. If I'm going to gain those yards, he thought, I've got to run real fast. Exceeding everything he had, he regained eight or 10, but trying so hard to catch the lead, he slipped and fell again. Defeat, he lay there silently, a tear dropped from his eye. There's no sense running anymore. Three strikes, I'm out, why try? The will to rise had disappeared, all hope had fled away. So far behind, so error prone, closer all the way. I've lost, so what's the use, he thought. I'll live with my disgrace. But then he thought about his dad, 
who soon he'd have to face. Get up, an echo sounded low. Get up and take your place. You were not meant for failure here. Get up and win that race. With borrowed will, get up, it said. You haven't lost at all. For winning is not more than this, to rise each time you fall. And so he rose to win one more. And with a new commit, he resolved that win or lose, at least he wouldn't quit. So far behind the others now, the most he'd ever been, still he gave it all he had and ran as though to win. Three times he'd fallen stumbling, three times he'd rose again. Too far behind to hope to win, he still ran to the end. They cheered the winning runner as he crossed the first place, head high and proud and happy, no falling, no disgrace. But when the fallen youngster crossed the line in last place, the crowd gave him the greater cheer for finishing the race. And even though he came in last with head bowed low, not proud, you would have thought he'd won the race to listen to that crowd. And to his dad, he sadly said, I didn't do so well. To me, you won, his father said. You rose each time you fell. And when things seem dark and hard and difficult to face, the memory of that little boy helps me in my race. For all of life is like that race with ups and downs and all. And all you have to do to win is rise each time you fall. Quit, give up, defeat, they still shout in my face. But another voice within me says, get up and win that race. <laughs> Apologize. I can't I can't share that poem without crying. But the reality is, you guys, you win when you don't give up. You win when you see a finish line. You win when you have a goal. You win when you go after it. You win when you don't let the distractions and the normalities of life define your quit. As I sign off tonight, I'm heading back to the hospital to see my dad, who had malignant lung cancer surgery last Wednesday. Our PATH report is good. We're very hopeful that there won't even be further treatment. But the reality is it's been June. You know, a week before, we were in San Diego celebrating my parents' 61st wedding anniversary. They knew about this pending surgery. We did not. So I know there are things in your lives. I know there are illnesses and, and, and children and schools and parents, and I know. I know. And so I want to encourage you to recognize that life is a blend of all of this and nothing that's going on in your life right now is a surprise to God. So I just want you to get up to take the next 36 hours and win your race. And wherever we land, wherever we land as a national area, and wherever we land as an epic family, I will be so proud of every single one of you who rose each time you fell to cross that finish line. So get up and win that race.